Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome to this video, guys. My name is Ziyak and Zaman. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. This is your wonderful, beautiful series. You guys all love Kuduri series. And here we go then. So let's carry on with this. The last lesson of this chapter, insha'Allah ta'ala. So let's see if we can finish this off, insha'Allah. Next, we'll be starting the next chapter. So he says, إِذَا حَبَسَهُ الْحَاكِمْ الْقَاضِي So حَبَسَ is fail. Right, so this is Qadi, the fad, the judge. Shahrayni is, is months, two months. أو ثلاثة. ثلاثة is three. سَأَلَ is to ask. And حَالِهِ حَالِهِ is the condition. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَنْكَشِفْ يَنْ يَنْ إِنْ كَشَفَ يَنْ كَشِفُ right, It means to become revealed. To become exposed. Lahu malun is wealth. Khalla yukhalli takhliya. Okay. Sabilahu is, is the mufubihi. Kadalika, likewise, the qama, to become a resident, to reside. Um, actually, no. Yeah, a qama means to set up. Okay, to set up, to bring. Al bayna is the mufubihi. Ala annahu la mala. Okay, so no wealth. Lahu. Wala yahulu. Hala yahulu means to come in the way. Right, so it means to come in the way. Bain ghuramaihi. Ghurama gharim. Okay, gharim means someone who uh, is owed money, a creditor, someone who's borrowed, lended out money. Creditor. Ba'da khuruji. Khuruj means exiting. Habs means in prison. Yulazimunahu Lazama Yulazimu Mulazamatan Okay to stick to stick to Wala Yamnaunahu Mana Yamnau no that Tasarruf means to invest suffer it means to go on a journey Ya Khuduna to take Fadla Kasbihi Okay so Fadla excess the excess of his earnings Kasb his earnings Okay so earnings فَيَقْسِمُ يُقَسِّمُ Divide with Bainu bil Shares وَقَالَ وَيُوسُفَ وَمُحَمَّدٌ إِذَا فَلَّسَ فَلَّسَ Is to declare someone Declare someone Bankrupt الْحَاكِمُ حَاكِمُ is a file The, the ruler حَالَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ غُرَمَائِهِ uh, إلا أن يقيموا قام يقيموا right, so it means to set up البينة بالتالي أنه قد حصل له مال ولا يحجر على الفاسق فاسق is someone who is open sinner someone who does sins openly disobedience إذا كان مصلحا مصلحا لماله والفسق فسق is الأصلي it means someone who is original Original. Atari it means it means recent. Uh, recent. So uh, on uh, woman. Okay, so woman Aflasa. Aflasa means to become bankrupt. Bankrupt. Wa in the humata'un mata is the goods li rajulin bainihi ibta'ahu minhu ibta' means to uh, by فَصَاحِبُ الْمَتَاعِ أُسْوَةٌ It means this is a, he's the same أُسْوَةُ الْغُرَمَاء So أُسْوَةُ رَدَى أُسْوَةً أُسْوَةُ Okay, أُسْوَةُ الْغُرَمَاءِ غُرَمَاء means creditors fee Okay, so let's have a go Actually did some I didn't realize I did explaining and I also did some layer abaza. Alright, so he says, Ida habasa hu al qadi. Qadi is uh, it's mankus, it's a mankus, so so you have it like this. Shahrayni, shahrayni is the maful bihi, or maful fihi rather. Alright, maful fihi, o thalathatan. O thalathan. Sa'ala fi al-fa'il an halihi jar majrur fa'in lam yankashif jazm 
Lahu malun. Malun is the file of the shift. Khalla fi al file. Sabilahu is the maf'ool bihi. Kadalika ida aqam al bayinata. This is the maf'ool bihi. Ala annahu la mala lana fi al jins. Wala yahulu fi al file. Bainahu wa bainahu ramaihi mudaf mudaf ilayhi. Ba'da khurujihi. This is darf. Min al habsi jar majroor. Wa yulazimunahu. لازمونه في الفعل ولا يمنعونه من التصرف والسفر okay, تصرف ويأخذون فضل كسبه okay, فضل كسبه means the excess of his earnings مضاف مضاف إليه فيقسم قسم يقسم بينهم بالحصص وقال أبو يوسف ومحمد إذا فلسه الحاكم في الفعل حال حال يحول بينه وبين غرمائه إلا أن يقيم البينة نستا البينة أنه قد حصل له مال ولا 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 يحجر أو يحجر يحجر على الفاسق okay let's go up a bit إذا كان مصلحا مصلح عن سيد خبر كان لماله جار مجر والفسق مبتدا الأصلي والطاري سواء ومن ومن أفلس أفلس وعنده متاء لرجل بعينه ابتاعه اشتراه منه فصاحب المتاء فصاحب المتاء أسوة أسوة الماذا خبر وقرماء فيه okay, so let's have a look at this مسألة then right so um, so what's happening over here this is the last section that we are covering on this whole introduction um and I don't know if you guys have enjoyed this or not. Or first time you actually come across this chapter. Let me know in the comments. Habasa al haqadi shahrain. So if there is a person, and let's say for example the judge has has basically put con like his the gurama have been wanting the judge to lock this guy away because this guy has is owes them loads of money, but he's not giving money. So this guy over here. The judge wants the people want him to go prison, so the judge puts him into Qaid. Right, so Miskeen, poor guy is in prison. Yeah, so he's gonna be put into prison until they can find out if he really has any money. Maybe he's hiding some money, and maybe if you put him into prison, the guy will ex you know expose where he's put the money or he'll confess. So this is basically what this is about. Putting him in prison for this reason. Now one thing to notice is in Islamic fiqh, people are not put into prison for any any crime. They're put into prison for certain crimes only. Right? So uh, you know, we have prisons in this country where people are put in there for all sorts of reasons. For theft, for murder, for attempted murder, for, I don't know, for, for cheating, lying, etc. All these reasons that people have a person will not necessarily be put into prison for these reasons. So there's limited reasons for why a person is put into prison and this is actually one of them. So he says, in fact, so that means in an Islamic situation, prisons would not necessarily be filled uh, as they are now. Right? There's other ways of dealing with criminals. So either Habas al-Qadi, Qadi, he imprisons this guy Shahrain, or Salatan for a three two months or three months. Sa'ala an Halihi. The judge will now ask regarding him. Right, so go do investigation, send out people, ask family, friends. For in Lam Yan Kashif, if it does not become revealed or appear, the Humalun, any mal, Khalla Sabilah. After two or three months, this guy is now going free. So two to three months. Alright, so that's the period of time. Okay. وَكَذَلِكَ And likewise, إِذَا قَامَ الْبَيِّنَةَ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ لَا مَالَ لَهُ So likewise, in this period of time, 
if somehow he was able to present proof yeah, in the form of witnesses so that he has no money. So he provides proof and he shows, he says, look, I've got no money. These are my witnesses that I'm literally bankrupt out of money. Then the judge will set him free. Now, once the judge sets him free, what's going to happen is the judge will not come between him and between the Ghurama. So previously, the judge, he may have, you know, said, no, no one can actually touch this guy. Um, but now the judge will actually say, you know what, forget this. Right, so I'm going to let you guys go and do whatever you like. So now the judge will actually allow these guys to actually go after him. Now he's not going to be in prison now anymore. But they are now going to go after him and they basically will just stick to him. They will stay at his workplace, they'll go to his house, his mosque, just because they need their money and therefore the judge has given them this right. Um, the judge will not come in the way between him and between the ghurama. He will not come in the way anymore. After, after leaving prison, so after he left prison, وَيُلَازِمُونَهُ And they will stick to him. Right, so they will actually literally stick to him wherever he goes. وَلَا يَمْنَعُونَهُ But they cannot stop him from doing any business, nor traveling. Right, so business, business. He can go and buy and sell, and he can go and travel wherever he needs to go. They can't stop him from doing these things. Yeah. Now what they will do is, they will actually take from the excess of what he earns. So whatever he earns, he's going to take out from there his own needs. And then the rest will be divided. Okay, The rest is going to be divided between them according to how much he owes each one. Yeah. So if you remember last lesson, I actually explained a bit of this as well over there. For example, let's say one of them he owes a hundred pounds. The other one he owns 500 pounds. And the other one he owes a thousand pounds. Okay, so one uh, actually one he owes. Uh, uh, let's say one he owns a hundred pounds. One he owns uh, yeah five hundred. One he owes one thousand pounds. So altogether, he owes one thousand five hundred. Actually, one thousand six hundred. He owes 1,600 pounds. So if this guy actually, let's say, for example, after making his earning, so after making his earning, we find out that he's got, basically, after taking all of his needs out, he's got 160 pounds he's made. So from that 160 pounds that he makes, um, 10 pounds will go to this guy, 50 pounds will go to this guy, and 100 pounds will go to this guy. Because that's in accordance with how much each one is owed. Right? So this is how much, this is what it means over here when he says, he says, وَيَأْخُذُونَ And they will take فَضْلَ كَسْبِهِ The excess of his wealth فَيُقَسِّمْ or يُقَسَّمْ بَيْنَهُمْ It will be divided between them بِالْحِصَصِ According to shares, 160. So according to how, many, how much they owe. Right? So each one is going to be given according to the amount that they have actually borrowed him. Now this is this is all like we said according to Imam Abu Yusuf and Abu Muhammad. So Imam Abu Yusuf and Muhammad also have another issue which he wants to mention over here. And that is the issue of um, can a judge declare someone judge? This is Mr. Judge. Can he declare someone bankrupt? Excuse me, sir, you are bankrupt. Can the judge declare someone bankrupt? So what he says is, "Qala Abu Yusuf wa Muhammad, ida fallasahu al-hakim." When the judge declares someone bankrupt, Abu Hanifa says a judge cannot declare someone bankrupt. A judge cannot declare someone bankrupt. You can become bankrupt if you have no money, but you cannot be declared a bankrupt person. Right? So that's the difference between Abu Yusuf, Muhammad, and Abu Hanifa. So if a judge declares, let's say for example, he judge he declares this guy, yeah, Uncle Raja, Mr. Raja, he declares him to be bankrupt. You are bankrupt officially. Once he declares him to be bankrupt, Hala Bainahu, 
he will come between him and between the Ghurama. Right, so the Ghurama are those who obviously claim that they are owed money. So basically, the judge will put like restrictions on them being able to go to his house, his residence, his workplace to pester him for the money. Illa an yuqimu al bayyina unless they establish for him proof annahu qad hasala lahu that he has achieved mal mal has come to him so if they can either prove they can say judge wait a minute we actually have proof to show that he does have mal if they can prove it to the judge then they are now allowed to go and pester him for that mal right and then he'll have to obviously cough it up like they say cough it up okay now last Penultimate masala then What's the penultimate masala? The penultimate masala is So can a person who is a fasik Can a person who is an open sinner Drinks alcohol or maybe fornicates Can a person who is an open sinner um, Be restricted Can restrictions hajar be put onto this person or not So the rule is no Everyone says لا يحجر حجر cannot be put introduction cannot be put onto a fasiq so long as إذا كان مصلحا لماله so long as he does not do anything bad with his wealth so long as he does not show any signs of being a safih or one of those things then he is considered to be fine now fisk I don't know if you know this or not but fisk is actually divided into into two types someone who has reached puberty as a fasik and someone who became a fasik after puberty all right so so before puberty and after puberty this is called asli and this is called tari atari okay so he says wal fisq al asli wa tari so are both equal all right so this one and this one are both equal Woman aflasa, finally, whoever has become bankrupt officially, wa in the li rajul, and he has goods that belong to another person bi ainihi exactly which he purchased of him, then sahibul mata is going to be treated equally like the rest of the ghurama. Okay, so what does this mean? Alright, let me try to draw this out nicely. So Monday. Okay, for example, like this guy, he buys, he buys, I don't know, he buys something from uh, this guy over here. We put him over here, okay. The guy is the seller. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So this guy is the seller. He has sold him a laptop, right, a nice laptop on Monday, and he has bought it. Okay, he's got a smiley face, he, he's bought it. Now the thing is he has not given the money yet so he's taken possession of it so he's taken the laptop but he owes let's say 500 pounds for the laptop 500 pounds for the laptop and at the same time this guy this clever guy has also got other people who he owes money to right so he's got other people who he owes money to right so these guys are all angry these are known as the ghurama creditors ghurama so what's going to happen over here so he is old so in this case he's saying that if this guy was to find right he's got the laptop with him and he's bought the laptop he owes him the money does this guy deserve the money more than these guys the answer is no all of them are going to be equal yes they all are going to be uswa so it's they are all going to be equal in regards to claiming their their money. Right? So all of them, even though this guy has the laptop with him, but still they will all be treated equal. So look, he says, uh, Woman aflasa, whoever has become muflis. Wa in the who whilst he has mata on the rajul, he has the mata of the guy, be ainihi exactly, ibta'ahu, which he has purchased. فَصَاحِبُ الْمَتَاعِ أُسْوَةٌ This guy cannot go and say, I want my laptop back. No, he can't do that. He is going to be considered to be equal with all the rest of the ulama. Right, so basically, all the rest of them, just like they have to go court and try to get 
the money from this guy, this guy will also have to do the same. He can't say, well, that guy's got my exact laptop. At least give me my laptop back. He can't do that because right? the trade has actually been done. And there you go, guys. That is basically today's lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson. Very nice, interesting lesson today. Okay, so let's break this down then. So, so questions for you guys. When a judge, when a judge arrests someone, how long does he arrest them for? So the answer is two or three months. Okay, why would he arrest them for two or three months? Answer, in order to find out whether he really has money stored away. After releasing him from prison, can the judge come between them and between the ghurama? The answer is no. He can't come between them and between the ghurama. What are they allowed to do? So they are allowed to stick to him, go to him and stay wherever he is in order to get their money back. Okay. Um, what if the guy in prison can provide proof that he has no money? Can he be released early? Yes, he can. Right, so these people, can they stop him from doing business and travelling? No, they can't stop him from doing business and travelling. How do they then get their money back? So what they do is, whatever earnings he makes, he takes out his needs, and the rest of it is going to be divided according to how much each one is owed, percentage-wise. Okay, can a judge declare someone to be bankrupt? According to Abu Hanifa, no. According to Sahibain, yes. And what will the judge do if he declares someone bankrupt? He will come in the way and stop the ghurama from pestering him. Okay, what if they can provide proof that he does have money stored away? If they can provide proof, then they can actually go after him. Okay, can Hajar be done onto an open sinner? Answer, no. Hajar cannot be done open sinner, whether he is an asli or tari. What's the difference between an asli fasik and a tari fasik? Difference is, one is uh, fasik from before puberty and one is after puberty. Okay, and what if a person was to buy goods off another individual and then not get his money yet from, not pay the, the individual? Can the guy claim back his laptop? No, he will be treated equally like all the other ghurama. Allah guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this lesson today. And it was a nice last lesson. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. If you guys enjoyed this series, if you like this lesson, please put it in the comments below. Give me suggestions as well. Um, might even be a good idea if if you have an exam on this as well. My exams are quite hard. If you have an exam on this, just to test yourself whether you understood. And uh, that's it, guys. So thank you to all my patrons who support my, my channel. And mashallah, you are wonderful people. Um, you allow me to be able to do these videos on a constant basis. So if anyone out there wants to become a patron, wants to support my channel, then please check out the link below. There are many perks. There's content that I put up for the patrons, which I don't put up on my YouTube channel. So check that out as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.